as a cap cost reduction. So basically a free down payment makes your lease go way down. The day is finally here where I reveal my new vehicle, which is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xe. And uh, I'm gonna get into some of the details as to why I chose this vehicle and what I like about it, what I dislike about it. I have just under 800 miles on the car now, so I, or the truck, the Jeep now. I had a chance to kind of get a little bit of seat time and get used to it a bit. Uh, definitely have a long way to go in the sense of even further getting accustomed to the vehicle as well as maybe doing some modifications in the future. but. Uh, I have already done a Wrangler Willys Willis review that I will link down in the description box below. And that's a slightly more in-depth like Wrangler review. This is going to be more focused on the 4xe in particular and why I chose the 4xe. Also, this is a Rubicon, so that's also exciting. We may do an off-road video sometime in the future. All I want to say before I get into the video is that for all of my subscribers that maybe found my channel through my last car, my 340i, Rest assured that this is about the sportiest Wrangler you can get aside from the Uber exclusive 392 model. And um, while in theory, I maybe would have preferred a less complicated traditional naturally or Pentastar V6 in a Wrangler, uh, I couldn't pass up the strong deal, which the 4xe is and the extra power and quickness you get. And if you guys enjoy this video, you throw it a like. And if you wanna see more content like this and help make content like this possible that you subscribe, now, without further ado, let's get out onto the road. All right, now that I've uh, done a little blabbing, it's chilly out here in LA once again, practically raining. You know what? I have a Wrangler, so I guess I can't really complain about that kind of thing anymore. Here's the thing. I haven't really launched this car or this Jeep. I'm gonna stop saying car. I haven't really launched this Jeep yet because I just got to about 800 miles and for the first six, 700 miles, you're supposed to take it pretty easy, at least not launch it hard, but this is video time. So what we're gonna do is shift the transfer case into four auto. I'm gonna put the vehicle into e-save and I'm gonna explain all this for those of you who don't know in a moment, but throw into e-save. Let's see how it does. Ooh, whoo, okay. Wow, there's 60, oh my God. Yeah, it's actually, wow. Okay, I, I like my new vehicle even more. That's my first time doing that, so. <laughs> I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty happy with that, okay. Okay, Wrangler. Now, as you guys can hear, the engine is running in the background. It's definitely noisy with the fact that the Wrangler in general is a noisier vehicle, you add to that the Sky One Touch, you add to that the fact that this engine kicks in intermittently to give you extra power depending on how much or how heavily you get on the pedal. Although now I'm gonna throw it back into two high, which is effectively rear wheel drive, and I'm gonna also throw the vehicle into electric. And you guys will see that in the next five to 10 seconds, the engine will shut off and there it just did. With the rain and with the wind noise from the One Touch and just the wind noise from this being a box on wheels. I'm not sure just how quiet necessarily this is. Um, but yes, the engine right now is not running. Uh, we're just using that. Well, it's two, ba it's two uh, electric motors for a combined 134 horsepower, but we're just using them right now. Coasting, easy breezy. I have 19 miles supposedly of EV range left. And that's because driving out here to the canyons today, I threw the truck into e-save mode to preserve as much range as possible. The most I've seen is about 26 or 27 miles of uh, claimed EV, pure EV range. Probably gotten about 20-ish miles on my best attempt in the real world. But let's get into some of the meat and potatoes before we talk about that stuff. Let's talk about the fact that I actually ordered this vehicle. It's part of why I chose a 4 by e is because this is a crazy car market. As some of you guys know, I actually sold my uh, 340i out of its lease uh, in order to recoup or I guess take advantage of some of that positive equity that was that was sitting there with this crazy car market. And with everything being just so expensive, cool used cars that I was considering, the prices were just so inflated I couldn't justify it. And a lot of other leases, again, were just super inflated due to inventory and due to these crazy dealer markups or lack of dealer discounts that previously existed. So I uh, 
but always kind of wanted a Wrangler. Figured what better time than now to do it because of how good of a deal the 4 bys are. And if you guys are curious about how good of lease deals 4 bys are, you can Google Jeep Wrangler 4 by e lease deals or leases and kind of get a sense of how much people are paying, what kind of deals exist. But these typically can actually be some of the cheapest or least expensive Wrangler leases available despite being one of the most expensive Wrangler models. Now, the Rubicon trim of the 4 by e starts in that low to mid $50,000 range, I believe. The price is constantly changing, to be honest. I know they've done a couple price increases. I think it started at just about 51 k Now it's somewhere around 54 for 2021, maybe 56 starting for 2022. Um, but as equipped, this vehicle, how I spec it, is just a hair over $66,000 in current pricing. I think it ended up actually being a tiny bit less, maybe like $800 less when I originally ordered it. Again constant pricing changes but at or for $66,000 which is a lot of money this is a tremendously aggressive uh, lease payment and it was just something I effectively couldn't resist uh, once again when you add the context of the market around it so that's really why I chose this for the money what I personally selected option wise well I went ahead and got the stingray exterior paint color i think it's one of the coolest colors i love it with the blue accents um, i think it looks so fantastic of course the red accents on a traditional rubicon are very cool as well but something about the blue helps it pop just a little bit more up on the hooks with the rubicon across the side of the hood and even this little decal in the center of the hood all very very cool second option i went ahead and got is the actually i'll stick with the outside i did the painted fenders these are the rubicon fenders so the highline fenders but they're painted you know you can go either way i think painted looks a little more upscale of course it's more expensive than as an option and more expensive to replace if you were to damage it but i think it was worth it in this particular case i also don't like how damaged the plastic ones get after some sun damage or some scratches get on them this is easier to maintain actually due to being painted but still plastic of course uh, the third option i went ahead and got is the leather interior I was 50-50 on it, but it's a little more, let's say, waterproof, and it's a 60 plus thousand dollar vehicle. I wanted to help make the interior just seem a little nicer, although the cloth is completely acceptable, and again, that Willys had cloth interior, I found it fine. I'm happy I went with the leather, to be honest. Just a little bit of a pricier option than I was hoping. I actually think sometimes some of the German cars, the luxury cars, will give you uh, leather seats for a lower price, but it is what it is. Next option I did is the Corning Gorilla Glass front windshield. I think this one's an absolute must. I don't know the exact number, but I think it's three or four times stronger than the traditional windshield. Uh, that much more resistant to rock chips. And there's plenty of uh, information out there about just how much more resistant to breaking, shattering, and chipping Gorilla Glass is. So for $195, I couldn't resist kind of both the coolness of seeing that gorilla, but just getting a little bit more of that protection so you hopefully won't have to replace your windshield because this is a very flat windshield and very susceptible to cracks, unfortunately. And I got the steel bumper group, which to me was just a must. I love that the end caps are removable up front, but most importantly, I just love that it looks so aggressive and is in fact made of metal up front and in the rear. Just that much cooler and a little bit of a rugged touch for the Wrangler for quite a pretty penny but that way I don't have to worry about anything on the aftermarket and I didn't do too many other options I actually did not or I for went getting any of the safety features just couldn't justify the price I don't really need to have parking sensors glance my monitoring it's pretty good visibility here the rear view camera is one of the best in the biz uh, here in this Uconnect system so none of that was necessary for me even heated seats I wanted them I think just about every single vehicle I've ever had has had heated seats and by the way I want to point out that we're still in electric mode here. We're cruising. You guys can't hear the engine at all as we come to a stop. And even as I take off from the stop sign here in a moment, you'll see that there's just absolutely no sound. Well, there's a little noise. The vehicle makes like a spaceship sound, but no engine noise. It's pretty cool. It was a thousand bucks for heated seats and a heated steering wheel. If I lived in a colder climate, surely would have added it on. I didn't get it. And I'm trying to go through my head and make sure there's not anything else I'm forgetting, but I believe the only other option that I added on, but yeah, the last option and the biggest option, the Sky One Touch, which I would love to open both just for how cool it would be right now and to show you guys, but it is just ever so slightly drizzling outside. 
and I don't want to get wet for no reason. Um, but probably the coolest option. The fact that you can take those rear windows out on the on either side is a very cool, let's say, gimmick of it. But just being able to press this button like a sunroof, opening it up, it's so funny because I usually don't like convertibles or even use sunroofs that often, moonroofs that often. But this is a Jeep. It's all part of the character and nature, and it's just something nice. I mean, I've got this car in this time of year when it's rainy and stuff in LA, which is very, very, very rare. But I'm sure in a matter of months, as things warm up a little bit, the sun's back and out, I'm gonna love being able to open it, cruise around, and I've already gotten a chance to do it a few times. You really can't beat it here in the rain with having that top open. Uh, and it's convenient, you know? Soft top in that Willys I drove, lovely. The freedom panels on the hard top, they're functional but inconvenient to use, and this is just so pleasant. The second I want, boom, it's open. I'm done with it, I close it. I, I really, I mean, I'll show you guys a quick example of, of what I mean. Look at that. You know? I get to enjoy the open air feel. It goes far, way further than this, but I'm not gonna open it too far right now. And when I wanna shut it, when I'm over it, so to speak, it's done. Closes on its own, exceptionally convenient. Uh, the only downside of the Sky One Touch really is, and I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, it you know allows a lot more sound in than uh, the hard top does. Less than the soft top, but definitely somewhere in that middle range. And sometimes you feel like some window is open or something. It's just the fact that this isn't your traditional SUV. This is a truck. This is a Jeep. It's gonna it's gonna let it in. But anyway, I digress. Let's get to, so the gave you guys the options and I've given you guys the relative price. As I said, this was just a hair over $66,000. But let's jump into uh, the powertrain, the most exciting part of this Wrangler 4xe. So this is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine and it's the same two liter turbo four cylinder that you'd find, basically the same engine you'd find in a regular four banger Wrangler. So, I was kind of kind of rhymed. So you're going to get 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque from the four-cylinder alone. Although the four-cylinder constantly works in tandem with the hybrid system, and there is an electric motor, basically the same kind of electric motor you would get in these new uh, e-torque Pentastar V6 Wrangler. But sandwiched between the transmission and the motor is a really proper electric motor. And that produces the vast majority of the 134 horsepower that the electric motor on its own provides. So right now, as I'm cruising in pure electric mode, if I give the car a little gas, if I accelerate a little bit, I'm purely using the 130 some horsepower that the electric motors provide. But once I get deeper into the pedal or once I switch it out of electric mode into hybrid or certainly into e-save and the engine kicks on, it's also then pulling from the EV uh, powertrain or I guess motors. So you're getting a combined 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So the same amount of torque that that beastly 392 V8 gives you and about 100 less horsepower. Of course, it's not gonna be nearly as quick as the 392 because this actually weighs more than any other Wrangler. This weighs like 5,500 pounds, 5,600 pounds, something like that, about 800 pounds more than your traditional Wrangler. And the batteries are actually right here uh, below the rear seats. So. The added weight helps smoothen the ride out and kind of balance the weight out more than other Wranglers. Can't speak for the 392, but more than a four cylinder, a six cylinder Wrangler, or even a diesel for that matter. But it's the heaviest Wrangler. So again, 392 is the quickest, best Wrangler, but it's the priciest by a margin. Doesn't get the $7,500 federal incentive that this receives. And on top of all of that, gets about 10, 11 miles per gallon. So you're gonna be filling up constantly with these five plus dollar uh, per gallon gas prices, at least here in SoCal. That's all a no-go for me. This, beyond being more available, beyond being sometimes discounted, unlike the 392, is then eligible for a $7,500 federal incentive, which FCA will extend to you as the lessee as a cap cost reduction. So basically a free down payment makes your lease go way down. Um, and again, makes this such an appealing vehicle. Now, the power plant, like I said, is pretty solid and I'm in electric mode I'm gonna switch over to hybrid so now I'm in hybrid mode still using pure EV range the engine is not kicked on but but if I come onto the pedal a little stronger and the gas engine kicks on 
I'm getting combined power, and you know, this thing doesn't corner too bad, actually. Now, something interesting for the real Wrangler nerds out there is that this 4xe, along with the 392, both get CV joints instead of U joints at the end of the axles, although this does have the ultra wide, so it has the wider Rubicon axles, but then I think even more so has the heavy duty axles, again, the same as the 392. So I don't know why with having such heavy duty axles, obviously these are Dana 44s being that this is a Rubicon. I don't know why it gets CV joints because they're obviously not gonna be as strong as U joints, but that's one of the downsides of the, three, of the 4xE and the 392. The 4xE here does happen to sit a little higher than your typical Rubicon, maybe about an inch higher, and this has been kind of verified by people all over the US in particular. You can kind of tell, it looks like it can really fit it set of 35s quite nicely which is something that i would absolutely love of course um i wish the 4 by u was offered with the brand new extreme recon pack that just gives you 35s from the factory and uh i think four five six gears but it is what it is four tens can still handle 35s no problem and this eight speed dual clutch transmission also seems to be able to get into eighth gear pretty easily along with rather supple power of the 4xe so i think going up to 35s isn't too bad the thing that i'm wary of is lifting this or going to 37s or 40s because no one i mean people have done it for sure with the 4xe's but it's not really been tested so much and it doesn't seem like the 4xe's have been built and intended for that kind of end uh, you need to start messing with a lot more stuff the brake lines the drive shaft apparently none of it is kind of again intended to see those parameters i don't know if i'm confusing people but basically this is not the ideal wrangler to go ahead and lift and throw on 37s throw on 38s throw on 40s the way that maybe a pentastar would be other than that though no complaints here for me some 35s and a modest lift would be awesome so where the 392 has an exhaust button and where all the other wranglers have an auto stop start on or off button you have a max regen button so it's usually off because i like to keep the vehicle kind of I guess rolling and I don't want to add any extra drag for no reason but when you do turn it on like I just did right now and I come off it starts slowing down pretty aggressively as you guys can see turn it back off um, it's not super effective at gaining you a bunch of EV range but it's very nice when you're going down a hill let's say a major slope you turn it on and it kind of gives you that little bit of resistance where you don't have to get heavy on the brakes and that's always nice on a 5,000 plus pound vehicle. Now I feel like I've rambled on for quite a while and this is definitely gonna be a longer video than I was anticipating, but it's a vehicle that I chose. So maybe you guys care to hear my opinion since I literally put my money in my mouth is and got one of these. So that bias aside, let's just jump into a quick, fun little tall boy test and we'll wrap the video up after that. <laughs> So as you guys can see, this does all right in the Tallboy test. Of course, uh, the big con of a Wrangler is that there is not quite as much storage as you may hope or think or assume. The rear trunk storage uh, space, so to speak, is all right. Um, not super deep, but because of the box-like shape of a Wrangler, you can fit rather large and tall stuff in there. You're not gonna deal with that sloping uh, roof line or tailgate you'd find on your sporty SUVs. But if you want to really lug stuff around, a Gladiator is the way to go for sure. Definitely don't get a two-door Wrangler because that has almost no space with the seats up. And even with the seats, three or seats down, not too much space. Uh, legroom itself is all right. Uh, it's better than I actually expected. And the seat design on the 4xE is a little different due to the batteries beneath. It feels a bit more sturdy and it feels a little bit more comfortable for some reason. I don't know if maybe it's a little bit of a placebo effect, but I do know the seat design is different. So not too bad. Um, the coolest thing about the 4 by is you can fold those rear headrests all the way down, which you can only get them to about this angle on the regular Wrangler. So they just get, they just kind of melt away 
give me that really good rear visibility and only when someone hops in the back they can pull the headrest up themselves. Up front, the cabin is super, super nice. Um, these JLs feel far nicer than the JK. Again, you guys can watch my Willys review to get a little more in depth, but I have the 8.4 inch Uconnect screen here, Apple CarPlay, it all works fantastically well. The sound system, which is an Alpine system, also sounds pretty solid for a Wrangler, considering there's not a single speaker on any of the doors, which are removable, of course. But something really nice about the 4 by is it comes standard with the 8.4 inch Uconnect system, and it also comes standard with the LED headlights and taillights. So those are things I would personally tack on, especially the headlights and taillights. They both look far better and offer a far, far superior light performance at night. Um, they change your fender DRLs and turn signals to be LEDs. Again, the lights themselves are great front and back. It's nice that the 4 by comes with all that for the additional price. You know, it's costing you about between six, seven grand more than a non 4 by Rubicon. So just getting all that stuff as part of the package was a real plus for me. Yeah, I mean, I just enjoy, I've been enjoying my time with these roughly 800 miles I put on the uh, Wrangler. I've been enjoying it. It's definitely no sports car, and it's it's been a learning curve. I've had to make some adjustments, but I haven't even had a chance to go off-roading yet, and I think that's gonna unlock a whole new exciting world. Again, I may make a video even of me doing a trailer to here and there and kind of sharing some of my personal experience with off-roading because I have gone off-roading with a few buddies that have Wranglers, but I haven't myself really gotten a chance to do a lot of the wheeling, and I'm excited to get out there try some things out and use this exceptionally capable vehicle the way it's meant to be used off-road and not just on pavement. Hopefully I'm not forgetting any important details, but again, this has been uh, a very unique and different experience for me coming out of several sporty European, in fact, German cars, my first not German, non-German car, an American car, obviously, but also a unique Wrangler. So So with all of that said, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. New videos are dropping every single week on Fridays. Comment down below, let me know what you guys wanna see. I'll do my best to make it happen, especially if it's four by you related, I'll definitely do my best to make it happen because I have access to this vehicle. And uh, with all that said, this is Rio, peace out. I put the new 4Gs on the Jeep.